our next visit will be with Sam Young, and he's going to tell us about Hong Kong. Sam, please. Thank you very much, Connie, for inviting me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hong Kong, but I'm going to tell you about cultures and the culture clashes that exist. I was born in Hong Kong, and this is the Hong Kong that most people see. Let me bring it up for you. This is your image of Hong Kong, right? Everybody nod, right? This is not the Hong Kong I grew up in. Let me go over here. This is the Hong Kong I grew up in. I grew up in the countryside of Hong Kong. But then at the age of, at the age of five or six, how do I get an, unshared. Somehow I can't get unshared. I think you might want to stop share on the top. Yeah. Is it stopping? I don't see a stop share. It already stopped. Okay. So if you want to share again, you have to go share screen again. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So my, at the age of six, I came to the United States. And when I came to the United States, I didn't know a lick of English. I went to school like two weeks, one week after I came to the United States. And I sat in first grade. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything. I just sat there. They handed me this piece of paper that had all this math in it. And I knew math. I, I knew math really well. And in fact, I knew my times tables by the time I was in first grade. So I did my math and then I sat down and I just watched everybody. About three months into that, just watching everybody, somehow all the kids started teasing me. And I decided that I, somehow I just decided that I, that was enough. And I grabbed one of those books. I don't know if you remember those books or some of you will might that um, some of those books that that are it's called Dick and Jane books, and and you know Dick Jane Dick Run Jane Run, I read the whole thing, of the, the Dick and Jane book, and all the kids went yay! He knows English, and so that was my introduction to American culture. And uh, I remember in second grade I broke my arm. The guys went t play tag all the time, and we play monkey bar tag. And I broke my arm, so I had to play with the girls. And the girls talk. Well, I didn't realize I didn't know anything, and so they started talking to me. I distinctly remember I had no idea what they were saying. I had no idea what they were asking. You know what I did? I said, "Huh? Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Uh-uh." And I survived recess by saying, uh-huh, uh-uh, all the time. Then, third, then th a couple years later, we went back. I went to Taiwan. I didn't, uh, I didn't know Mandarin. And so I went to American school and played with the kids nearby. And so after a few years, we went back to Hong Kong. And I was too late, and I didn't know Chinese, so I went to American school. So I, the whole time, I went to American school in, in all these cultures. But I still learned the culture of the land, of my homeland. And when I came back to the United States, I discovered that the communication was a little different between the people here and the communication between the people in, in the homeland. And, and, and it's very, very subtle, that communication difference. When, when I was here, I became, eventually I became vice president of a university and my directors would be sitting there and I would be talking to them, giving them direction. And they would look at each other and say, what do you say? And I thought to myself, well, I'm speaking English. I don't think I have an accent. Why don't you understand me? And then one of my directors, his wife is Chinese. And he, he says, oh, he means da 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 And they go, oh. So I started analyzing what's the difference? Why is it that 
what he said is is okay i mean they understand it and what i say which i don't think i have much of an accent is they don't understand so there are some differences in how we speak in each culture when i was the first time i was a cio chief information officer i was at in in riverside and half my staff was asian another quarter of the staff was Hispanic and then the others were white. And I had no problems communicating with them. When I went to San Antonio, 75% of my staff were Hispanic. I had no com problems communicating with them. Then I went to a university in San Diego. 85% of that university, my staff was white. And I had a problem understand, they had a problem understanding me. And so I started to understand analyzing what are the differences i discovered a few things in, in asia we we are very polite in what we say we don't say you're stupid or no absolutely not we're polite and we say you know it would be nice if you don't do that and 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 or or you could do anything you want but that's not very smart and people would just misunderstand. Let me give you an example. My my uncle was a um, well. My uncle donated money into a a elementary school to do build a build an auditorium. The school needed a classroom, so they went to my uncle and said, "Can we use your money to to build a classroom?" And he says, "You could do anything you want, but I would prefer you build out the auditorium." So the, 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 the people went back to the school and say, well, he said we could do anything you want. Well, that's not what he said. So we had to go back into the board and explain what he meant by saying, you could do anything you want, but I prefer you do this. So sometimes each culture has a different way to communicate. We need to watch that as we communicate with different people in different cultures. Hispanics, they communicate very similar to the Asians, but white people are very straightforward. So watch what you say, be careful. And back to you, Connie, uh, this Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Sam, for some words of wisdom. And also for me in particular, those fun stories of childhood. 